Hey everyone. So today we are going to build this material which is um, you know like this rocky ground with puddles and what you can do is slowly but surely for added drama uh, get it colder and snowier and what happens also is that um, the water is freezing up here a little bit right now and then once it crosses the point five mark we're starting to get like these sort of snowy slash frosty patches on the water as well. And then as it slides up to one, you know, the snow gets a little bit thicker. And so we're going from you know, like this green ground, well, from the snowy ground now back down to this green ground. Now, the material, it's kind of an unwieldy beast. Um, because there's a there's a lot of stuff going on um but it's not nearly as complicated as it looks right here plus i've got it all uh this these are also my notes uh this is how i um you know i mark up the the material that i built with my notes so it's got all my stuff in it right now but this is also a good way of handling it when you build a large material you don't have to get into the details of you know like what your settings are for everything in the in the comments but Breaking it up like this actually makes it pretty easy to create because there's each one of these. So this is our puddles, uh, our rocks, our ground, and our frost is down below. If you look at each one of these as if it's a separate material, there's, there's nothing particularly complicated going on in any one of these. Uh, and then it's just a question of bringing them all together at the end. So, it, you know, it takes up a lot of space, but it's doing that mostly because it's it's a lot easier to sort of keep everything in order that way the way we're going to build it is kind of conceptually in two different ways i mean in two different sections uh if we look at our base ground here we have three basic elements we have the rocks we have the grass and we have the puddles and the rocks and the ground aren't going to change uh, at all as we move our slider. The water is going to stay the same size and shape and the only thing that's going to change in the in the water is we're going to change the normals and some other things that are going to make it look more like ice rather than liquid water but as far as the masking and everything goes it stays the same. So we're going to deal with these three things first so we're going to make the rock uh, we're going to make the ground and we're going to make the mask for the puddles. And once we've done that, the rest of it is actually pretty straightforward, except we're going to just add some dynamic functionality to some of the things that we're going to put as far as the maps um, for the frost and for the puddles. But the masking will all be done. So then it's just a question of literally like daisy chaining them up in here and it's all exactly the same because we got our masks sorted out. So while it may look like a gigantic material, uh, well, it's not a small material, but it's not nearly as gigantic as it looks. So the first thing we're going to deal with is what I'm calling the rock section here. And what we're going to deal with first is this little bit in here because this is the mask that is going to cut out the rocks from the ground right here. And then we're going to make a secondary mask, which we're going to use later on for the frost, but we may as well make it now, which is built off of our rocks here. And it's going to let us cut out uh, like the higher bits of the rocks so the, so the snow doesn't actually land on those. And that's going to be section one. So why don't we get to it? So let's make our new material. I'm going to come into new substance. We'll call this snow ground. So it's not exactly the same name I gave it before. And first thing I want to do is, well, first thing I want to do is get my height next to my normal because I like it like that. But we also need to make a couple of extra output nodes. Uh, we're going to need a subsurface scattering. I'm just going to duplicate this and I'm going to make turn this into a scatter and I will set it to scatter zero 
And the other thing I need to do is I want to also make a specular level, which I'm going to put here. Oops, don't want, no, not specular color, specular level. Oh, look what I did. I switched these around. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but um, I'm going to have to change the names because I, um, I thought I was working on the copy and I wasn't. And we're going to come back in here. I'm going to change this back to metallic. And finally, I'm going to make an ambient occlusion. And that should be us fixed for our output nodes. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, I'm saving it in the same spot, which is why I kind of wanted um, to have a different name on it. But you can call it whatever you like. And we're now going to start with the mask that's going to create the difference between where our rocks are and where our um, ground is, you know, the, the greenish ground is. I'm going to come into my library. I'm going to type in shape. And we're going to get this shape node. And I believe I used a bell. Yeah. If we don't like that, we can always change it. And I, I did bring its size down a little bit. I have my scale marked down as 0.85, but it may end up being different for us. I mean, these things never come out exactly the same. But the idea is I, 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 I don't want it going, I don't want it hitting these edges, and I'm going to start doing stuff to it, so we'll play it by ear. The other thing that I need is I want clouds too. And what I'm going to be building now is the basic sort of rock island shape that we're going to be feeding into this effects map that's actually going to randomize all that stuff and spread it out for us. We're going to get a blur and we're going to get a warp. And we're going to take this bell shape and we're going to blur it. I had it as the default, but again, you know, you can set it however you want and we're going to really warp it. So my mine was set at 29.81 and now you see what I'm getting at with having to make that shape smaller because what I don't want to have happen is to have them going over like that. So we're going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm also going to make this so it is, I think we'll be happier if we set it to absolute. I don't think I had it set like that in my notes but we're going to do it like that anyway because it's going to mean that uh, we shouldn't run into tiling problems later. Now you see what, why I was making it smaller because we get that straight line. So we, we can change that in a couple of ways. We can make the warp a little bit less or we can make this a little bit smaller. And the way you fine tune it is you just kind of, you know, mess around with the two of them until you get something that you're happy with. We'll bring down this warp a little bit. And now we're not really having problems with that edge. This one, that's just a little dot. I think by the time we're done doing what we're doing to this thing, I don't think that tiny little straight edge there is going to matter. And we can always come back and deal with it later. This is kind of fuzzy for my shape. Again, this is an aesthetic thing. I want it more, I want my edges sharper and I want it kind of, well, funky is the, you know, funky is the word I'm going to use, but that's hard to quantify. Uh, again, you can make this look like whatever you want it to look like. I'm going to go ahead and warp it a second time. And I had this set as a much lower number. And you can see the difference. I mean, we're, it's giving me like these funkier shapes happening in here. And it kind of looks like rock striations. And again, in here, you know, these sharper edges, because this is going to be our rocks. And if you want sort of very soft undulating rocks, then, you know, don't do this second warp. But anytime you warp something, well, we're not really warping it against itself, but we're warping it against a similar warp. Um, when you warp something against something that's very similar in shape, whether it's literally itself or something that's very related, what it tends to do is flatten out whatever you have. And if that's the effect you want, uh, go ahead and do that. And I, I do it quite a lot. But this is what we're going to be using as sort of the basic um, rock shape. 
I'm going to warp that top. I want a little bit more difference in here. Yeah, that's probably better. Um, anyway, getting back to what I was saying, uh, this is our, base, our basic shape. So we're ready to actually put this into our effects map. And, you know, we're not making a noise here. Uh, we're going to leave these. It's going to be a very simple effects map. We're just going to use it to uh, randomize where these shapes will appear. First thing I want to do, I want to convert this FX map to grayscale. And then in order to start editing it, we're going to hit right click and then edit FX map. And here we are. All right. So because we're not making a noise, we're, this is going to be our final row down here. And since each one of these quadrants we're going to have exactly the same, I'm going to work on this first quadrant and then we'll just copy it out. The other thing I'm going to add straight away is we're going to add an iterate node and we're going to set that as the root. And I'm going to set this up. We're going to bring it back down again, but I'm going to set it up for right now to three because I, I, I just want to get a visual idea of how our quadrants are going to be reacting. So we're only dealing right now, anything we project up is only going to be right here in this first quadrant because it counts one two, three, four. So that's one, two, three, four. So we're going to bring this information in here. And now we have to set it up to take this image input as the thing that it's going to be manipulating. And so our pattern is going to be our image input. And there we go. We have three versions. They're all stacked on top of each other. So that's why it looks like one, but we have three versions, three iterations rather of this sitting up in this first quadrant. Now, what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to offset the pattern. We're going to want to offset the size and that we're going to want to offset the rotation. And instead of putting each of these on, we could put them separately on each one, but that's kind of a drag to deal with. We're going to put this all on the first color luminosity function. And then we're going to set the variables and we're going to shoot that information into the correct variable down here. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it the slow way because I, 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 what, I, what I normally do is I'll go ahead and make these first. I'll like create the, um, the variables. And you can do it in either way. So you can come in here and just immediately do empty function. And we'll... This is going to be a pattern offset, so we're going to want a get float2. We're going to be creating a float2, and we're going to call this pattern offset. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come back out to my effects map. I'm going to go into this first color luminosity, and now I'm going to set the variable. So basically, I do this. I mean, it, it works in either direction. The important thing is, is that this first function that you're putting everything on is the one that sets the variable and then down the line they get the variables. So you can create them in whatever order you want to create them but this is where it's set and then this is where it gets um, called back. So we've already done this one. We can just go ahead and start doing this and we'll do it in the opposite direction. So offset is the first one we're doing and we're going to actually now create the function itself. And it's super simple. We want two different random numbers. So I'm going to duplicate that between 0 and 1. So the random function always gives you a number between 0 and whatever this number is. So you, you can actually set this to be whatever number you want. You can have a number between one and one, 0 and 100, whatever. But this, we want this to be a float two because we're going to need, the pattern offset needs to be a float two. So before we can plug that in, we need to vector this, these two float ones into a float two, and that's going to give us our pattern offset. But we still have to deal with whatever's happening in this first node because remember, we're, we're sitting right now on color luminosity. So we still need to give color luminosity information. And the way we're going to do that is with a sequence node. So first, it's going to do this pattern offset. And whatever we have going on up in here, the last 
thing I want this node to look at is whatever I actually want my color luminosity to be. And in this case, I want it to be one. And however much of a mess we make up here, and we can daisy chain all day long, because we, we're on the color luminosity, we want this to be the final number. And then I'm going to set this as my output node. But it didn't change because I forgot to, we made the, we made the variable, we didn't set it as an output node. And now it's done that offset for us. So it's, give, it's gone through the Markov chain here. It has three iterations to run through. So it goes through here. This gives it its size. So it's going to say, OK, we're going to take this and we're going to have it up in this quadrant. And in this final level, it's given in this final, and in this final quadrant, it's actually telling it what to do. And so far, it's just told it to offset the pattern by an x and y each of random value. It did it for the first one, it goes back, it does it for the second one, it goes back, it does it for the third one. That's how an FX map node works. But right now they're all the same size and they are all uh, in the same rotation. So what we need to do is just, you know, keep going with this. And we're going to just keep on keeping on. We're going to keep this super simple. We don't really want them small and big. It's not like we want a bunch of different little islands. We just basically want a big blob. but. Uh, we want it to be, you know, just, just a random big blob. All right, so pattern size we'll do next. So I'm going to, let's do it the other way now. So let's come back into our pattern. Oops. So let's come back into our color luminosity and we'll create our pattern sizes next. Like I said before, I don't want these small. I, I, I want, you know, a rock mass. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. We're still going to have two new random numbers. So I'm going to duplicate these guys. And I still want two random numbers between 0 and 1. Only thing is, I want that number to stay above 1. So we're essentially going to have it run between 1 and 2. And I'm going to do that by adding the number 1 back on it twice, one for each time. So we're going to take a random number between 0 and 1, and we're going to add that to the number 1. And again, we're going to vector this down into a float 2 because our pattern size, again, is an xy value. And we're going to set the variable because we set the variable in the first function. And I'm going to call this pattern size. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to come back into here. I'm going into my pattern size, create an empty function, get a node, variables, get float2. And then I'm going to paste this in here because whenever you're getting, whenever you're setting variables, they're, they're not going to be, well, once you put it in here, it'll appear. But um, not unless you type it in. We'll set this up as the output, we'll set this as the output node now. We'll come back into our first function and we'll link it up in here. We're going to need another sequencer. So first it's going to do the pattern offset. Then it's going to do the pattern size. It, it doesn't really matter what order it does these in. I'm just doing it this way because that's the way it has it in, in the layout. But it, it, this doesn't really, you don't have to do them in the order of the layout. You can do them in whatever order you want. But you do need to finish with whatever belongs in this particular function. And now we've done the size. So our size is, you know, it's going to now be between 1 and 2. And if you want this number to be a bit smaller, it doesn't have to be 1. I mean, we can, we can go ahead and create a new constant in here. And, you know, you can make this 0.5. It doesn't really matter. It's just that if you have it as between 0 and 1, you're going to get like a lot of difference in size. So that's why I'm doing this so that it, you know, they're more or less big pieces. I think I might, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it like that. I kind of like that. We can always bring it back to one. It doesn't really matter. It's all aesthetics. And, you know, while we're here, since we really do understand the concept at this point, at least I hope we do, is we might as well make our rotation. And I'm going to get, no, I don't need to, I'm just going to, duplicate this. Now, rotation is a float 1. So we're not going to have to vector it. 
and all we really want is a number between 0 and 1 because it, it does turn so um, a full turn is 360 and that's it we're going to get another set variable and we'll call this pattern rotation I'm going to copy it I'm going to get another sequence node and we'll add it in and it, it still hasn't taken effect because we still haven't put it in here so we're going to create an empty function we're going to go into our function we're going to add our node and this time we're getting a float and we're going to paste our float in there and we are going to set it as our output node and there we go we now have like a bunch of rocks and it's you know it's taking up a goodly chunk of the um, of the frame here which is kind of what I want but if you want less rocks you know by all means have less rocks. now remember before we make this decision uh, we've only just got one of these quadrants going so now that we have it all set up I'm going to duplicate this three more times and we've set it up now we have too many iterations but I, I wanted to, it's easier to see what you're doing as far as what's happening if you've got a bit more iterations in my notes I actually had it as two um, but we can come back if once we once we are actually starting to make this material we can come back here and tweak this but we no longer have to bounce back and forth between all of these we can just come back to this one function and move stuff around like you know we can change the basic size by coming in here and that's probably the only thing we will possibly be doing but for the moment it looks pretty good I'm gonna leave it alone let's get back to our main graph just for fun I'm going to plug this into the color to see what it looks like yeah I think that'll be good because we actually are going to cut into it a little bit as we're doing these maps it, it's probably going to get a bit smaller than what it is now but I like the fact that it's striated I kind you know it's like those rocks that have been squished and um, they're like in layers and that was the look I was going for so yeah so far so good all right and then we're going to finish this one up by creating a couple of extra masks off of here this effects map sort of on its own has got a lot of subtle variations going on so something like this is good for your color uh, we can adjust it here by going into the global opacity if we bump that number up we can you know we, we can create these you know high white areas so that's going to be useful um, I didn't write down what I had in my notes but it kind of looks like this so you know it's a little bit higher than normal but it, it's still giving us some variation and, you know I'm thinking about gradient maps right now so you know I've got some different grays happening in here I've got some nice whites but this isn't going to make a very good just mask mask we need something really extreme for that because we want to take this down to black and white so I'm going to leave this the way it is and I'm going to get a levels node and in here I'm going to just go crazy on it and get rid of all of those midtones or as many of them as I can I mean we might want a little bit of gray on the edge just to blend things in but this is our mask now so probably more like this and this gives us a more or less clean black and white maybe with a little bit of change if you really want it sharp you can you know you can adjust it but this is going to determine where our rock material comes in which is going to be in the white areas and our green ground material which is going to come in in the black areas so you know there is a certain amount of mixed areas where you know the grass is really thin and you can kind of see the rock underneath but those areas are pretty limited and those are the two main masks that we have for our rock our rock versus ground and the final thing that we're making in this set is a secondary set of masks based off of this FX map that's going to determine sort of the high points of this white area in here because we're going to use that to cut out where we don't want frost or snow to go and to do that I'm going to get a bevel and I'm going to take this and I'm going to create mountains well mountains rocks out of it and I had it set as negative point one three but again you know this is a different set of rocks what I'm looking for here 
is I'm imagining these rocks with the white areas you know, the white is the most rocky and then it kind of fades off. The very tippy tops of these we're going to have is if the wind blew any snow that did fall there, the wind kind of tends to blow it off of those high points. And we're going to kind of follow the same idea here where we have this initial mask has, you know, a lot of gray areas. It's going to give us the most detail as far as any kind of colors or variation that we might want. In this particular case, we're not going to be doing it for that, but we are going to be using this for our normal um, map. So I want this to work for a normal map. So I want this nice bevel. I want this nice um, gradation. I do want to change a couple of things though, because we are talking about rocks here. So I'm going to, instead of using a round corner, I'm going to use an angular corner and that makes it look a lot more sort of rocky and sharp. And I'm not going to smooth it down at all. I want to keep it jagged like that. So it's going to kind of give me these really sort of jaggedy normals, which is in this particular case exactly what I want. But I'm also going to need this as a mask. And we're going to do exactly the same thing here that we did up here. And we're going to take this height in here and we're going to turn it into more of a mask. So. I want to keep the size. Um, I'm looking out for my edges. And here I probably want more um, gradient than I had in this first one because again this gradient here is talking about how much snow is going to be laying on top of these things or the lack of. Uh, think of this as a reverse mask. We're going to actually end up reversing this. Uh, so l least no snow at all and then less and less and less. And that is our rock versus ground mask done. So why don't we put a frame around it and we'll call this rocks. And if we want, you know, sometimes I'll put a secondary frame if things get big and confusing. And you can also change the color of your frame like that. You can pick a color and we'll just call this masks. So we know, you know, because this is, this is going to get a lot bigger and we'll know what's what that way. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is the ground. And this is really easy. Um, I'm going to use black and white spots, black and white spots number one. And that's pretty much it. However, we're going to need like a couple of versions of this. Uh, our main one, we're going to just do the levels. I just want it uh, more contrasty a little bit. This is going to be determining where our puddles are. We're going to be kind of basing it off of this partially. And it's going to uh, determine a lot of the color that we're going to use for our green areas. So, you know, the heights of the puddle areas and the green areas as far as the plants go. So, you know, that, that's the gray scales you're going for in here. But we're going to use it also for other things and we might as well um, take care of those now. So like I said, we're going to do the puddles off of it and that's going to be a lot more contrasty. So those are going to be more, more like this. And we're also going to use it uh, in relationship to our frost mask or frost mask, I should say snow mask. And that one is going to be a much more even mask. And these two guys we're going to set aside for now. We're going to deal with them later. But for right now, for our rock versus ground stuff, we're going to take the results of this mask here and we're going to blend it on top of here with a light and blend. And it's going to create for us um, we're going to use this to make a, a super special normal up in here. It's just going to give us a, a richer normal because we're going to do a little bit of layering and it's going to create, we're going to eventually create a normal map off of here that's going to have kind of these empty areas for the rocks, but it's going to help us um, kind of attach the two together and have it relate to the ground. And then we're going to do another normal that's going to relate to the color. So that's for future plans. But this right here represents the entirety 
of the basic mask for the ground. I'm going to make this a lot bigger because it's going to need to get a lot bigger. And we're going to draw a second frame around this. I'm unhighlighting that frame. And we're going to call this one mask. And we'll change the color. And finally, we are going to make our puddles mask. And I'm going to get a bevel. And we're going to take this guy and we're going to put it into the bevel node. And again, I'm going to start with what I, the distance I had in my notes and we'll take it from there because obviously the shapes are all different. But what you're doing now is these white areas here are going to represent where your water is. So I, I think I'm kind of happy with that size. We'll leave it there. Uh, I'm going to make this angular again, you know, because I, I, I don't want it little dots. I'd rather have it little squares because it's going to default to one or the other. But what I do want is I, I don't want these jagged edges. So we're going to smooth it a bit. You know, I still want variation, but I don't want it to look quite so angular. You can try round. Let's try round, see if round works better for us. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see what it looks like once we've put our levels node in here because we're going to sharpen those edges up a bit. They're still, you know, they're very fuzzy now. But what that's done, what the smoothing has done, it's gotten rid of, you know, a lot of that artifacting around the sides. So now with this levels node, I can create a, a more better edge for my water. Let's bring that smoothing down a bit. I think it's a little much. I want, I want to see what this looks like. I, I'm going to change it back to angular and see if I like that better. I, I don't like these dots. And I'm going to move the smoothing back up a bit. Yeah, I think I like that better. All right, so that's going to be the basic outlines of our, um, of our ponds, of our ponds, of our puddles. Um, but we don't want them on top of our rocks. So we're going to actually have to, to anywhere that this white appears, we're going to have to uh, not have puddles because we, we don't want the puddles on top of the rock. And since we're dealing with grayscales, uh, I'm gonna I don't have to make I don't have to make a, a, an inverted mask. If I go ahead and use this mask here, and instead of cutting it out, instead of using this as a foreground, I'll put this in the background. Because we're dealing with grayscales, if I leave this empty, it's assuming it's black. So basically, I'm just putting black on top of this according to this mask. And what it's done is you'll notice that we have water areas here that are no longer showing up because that is now covered in rock. And now you kind of get a better idea of how much water you have going on in here. So if you want to make your puddles bigger, you can change your bevel. I think I'll go with that instead. And then you can change the, the way the edges look with this uh, levels node. The final thing um, that I'm going to do with this uh, puddles mask is I'm going to get a warp node. And I'm going to warp it against itself. And I'm just doing this because as I was experimenting with the material, I wasn't happy when I when I was putting the snow on top of it. I wasn't happy with the the way these edges were like so completely even uh, when this you know when it came time to put the snow on. And I wanted to get some variation. So this is an example of warping something against itself. I'm going to bring this down really low. I mean like really low. But you'll see the difference. I'm thinking about now only the edges here. You see how these are all really even and nice? And then when I warp it, I get like these kind of oddities. And in this particular case, I want that because when, when you have these little puddles, um, there's a lot of stuff going, going on around the edges because it's so shallow. So you have bits and pieces of pebbles and stuff kind of coming out. And it, and it just looks better when it's a little bit more jaggedy like this. And that's why I put the warp on. But you know, essentially it's, you know, it's just a mask and you can get that mask to look however you want. If you want your edges nice and smooth, then make your mask nice and smooth. And we're going to make this part of our puddles mask. I mean, puddles section. And then we'll create a nice separate little mask 
a separate little frame for these guys and we'll call that mask. And so we now have these three, one, two, three masks that we're going to be able to use to start hooking up our materials.